<laughs> Hi. It's very interesting for me because I never thought that I would have a conversation or uh, have an opportunity to ask you something. I'm really uh, from Russia and I'm from St. Petersburg. And um, I got, the, got to, to the point that I uh, had this um, red pill, uh, how do you call it? Epiphany. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, about uh, in the, in the, I don't know, in five, five months ago and through Richard Cooper, uh, just going bold actually, uh, <laughs> saw uh, his video on um, cutting, head. yeah, shaving mm -hmm. hair. Mm -hmm. So uh, what I really enjoyed and is in the, I read your book, Rollo, and um, what you you kind of don't get the point i mean uh you don't touch this relationship with the uh, mothers with other women because mm -hmm. red pill is pretty much about about uh, having a relationship established with women and uh, from mothers to children daughters mm -hmm. and it really improved my relationship with my mother mm -hmm. it, 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 amazingly amazingly mm -hmm. because we kind of had some uh, some bad relationship. I would not say bad, but damaged uh, mm -hmm. pretty much. But when you just get this red pill, when you understand that you are having a conversation, when you have a relationship with a woman, which is not just a very important person for you, but it, she's also just a woman, just a person, just a woman, like any other L. And you kind of, I, it's, fascinating that it really makes you treasure it more so uh, it pretty much you don't cover this topic uh, on uh, uh, any of your um, I would say uh, Redman group charts and uh, mm -hmm. other videos so can you make um, say some words on uh, mothers and uh, sons well, yeah, yeah. So. Um, well actually if you, I, you probably haven't read uh, the third book yet uh, third book no. I go I go into this a little bit more in detail in that uh, I, I get into the dynamic family dynamics a little bit more um, in positive masculinity uh, mostly from uh, from being a red pill parent um, in in that respect uh, I, I have written a few things about uh, fathers and sons um, and a little bit about mothers and sons uh, kind of indirectly. Um, I think that just what, just what you're saying about understanding uh, red pill dynamics, understanding uh, intersexual dynamics um, gives you a better, a better grasp of women's, I guess for lack of a better term, psyches, okay? Uh, understanding what they're about, understanding how hypergamy uh, directs uh, decision-making in women's lives, uh, and then understanding that your mother was just as hypergamous and your dad was just as much an alpha or beta as anybody else, and your grandparents and your great-grandparents. I mean, human beings have been the same pretty much for 100,000 years, right? And I think that uh, it's important to really wrap our heads around the, I'll say the evolutionary psychology of this, but like understanding where we have come as a species up to where we're at right now. I mean, we are still in our brains. We're living in 2018, but our, our, we evolved into what we are right now uh, a very, very long time ago. And so the rules that are part of that are still influential in our in our hind brains and in who we are as people just like what we were just talking a minute ago about the the feral nature of human beings giving you a better understanding of that um and so you can apply that to your family and you can apply that to your work and you can apply that to um gosh i mean i, I have used i've used <laughs> i've used red pill pr uh principles to get out of a speeding ticket once <laughs> um i i've used it to uh I mean, there's a lot of more applications to game than I think a lot of people are really, really aware of. Um, one of the things I think that people don't understand is that you can use game and you can use uh, red pill awareness in your marriage. You can use it with your mother. You can use it with your sisters and have a better relationship, just simply like what you were talking about before. Uh, I think probably what you want me to answer is uh, the relationship between father or between mothers and sons. Uh, I have talked about this from the respect that there are women who are single mothers and how they uh, 
I don't know, if, and I don't know if this is where you want me to go with this, but how single mothers influence their their male children. Uh, single mothers tend to want to develop and to raise a child or a, a boy into the kind of man that she idealizes as her beta or as her provider, because she wants that guy, she wants that boy, not to be, not to be the alpha asshole. She doesn't want that guy to. I mean, wants to stand up for himself and be, you know, be a, to be a little more assertive. I think, but wants to be the guy who's going to provide for her in the long term because that is, I think that a lot of single mothers view their view their sons as sort of an insurance policy for them. If they never find the guy who is the the perfect mate for them, if they've never optimized their hypergamy, at least from the beta buck side of hypergamy, they're they're going to pour themselves into creating a boy who is going to fit that ideal or what they think should be that ideal. And I think that that's where a lot of guys make big mistakes because they are taught to be much more blue pill. They're taught to be much more. I mean, these are the, these are the kind of kids that, that their, their moms bring them to these, you know, feminist rallies and here, here, hold this sign that says, you know, boys will be good humans instead of boys will be boys. Right. Uh, and I, I think that, I think that women have this part of part of the the narrative that goes along with the strong independent woman is this belief that a woman can be everything it can be everything for for be everything for everything meaning that she can be just as effective as a masculine role model as she can be for a feminine role model and with the masculinization of women today i think that they believe that they can be better fathers than the, than their own fathers than than the kids own father um, and i think that they believe that they can model a better form of masculinity than any man could right and they don't realize that just how you know, just the hubris involved in saying like, I, you know, imagine me saying, I'm going to be a better mother. You know, I'm going to be a better mother than, than any woman could be. So I'm going to be a single guy. I'm going to be a single dad and I'm going to raise you and you're going to get even better understanding of, of the of femininity because I'm just everything that I can be everything to ev or be everything to everything. And I think that that women don't even see that simply because they're very solipsistic and they don't believe that there's no insight to say, well, I can't be everything. Um, and so what happens then is these kids get that their, their upbringing is really a modeling. Remember, I mean, when, when we're raising kids, it's really engineering the next generation. So you see these, these guys, you see this, this generation of millennials raised by single parents who end up being the, the stereotypical millennial. They, they're confused about ma masculinity. They become confused about, uh, or, or they hate masculinity. They end up becoming what I call gender, gender loathing. They're taught by their schools, they're taught by culture, they're, they're taught by uh, religion, they're taught by you know, popular media to hate, them, hate their male gender, to hate their male selves. And what happens is then those guys become very confused or they, they dislike being male. And I think that from a single mother's point of view, that is, is, is part and parcel of what it is that they are sort of inculcating into the next generation of boys. Now, that might not be what you're talking about. That might be, you might say, well, I come from a family where I've got a very alpha father and I've got a very, um, uh, well, for lack of a better term, a submissive mother who is a feminine mother and a, and a masculine father. Uh, those are the guys that don't ask me this question. <laughs> those are the guys who didn't have that strain. I mean, they might have because their their mothers were were kind of domineering. But remember, when you that's one of the the benefits of having a two two parent family is that you've got the you've got the masculine model and you've got the feminine model, and they're in two different people, and they're being taught to you in two different ways. And where one makes up for the deficit of the other. That's why I always say that men and women are complementary to one another. Uh, that also comes through in parenting. So hopefully that answers you. You know that you you inspired me. I think I'm probably going to end up having to write a post about this now. So thanks a lot, man. <laughs>